I, I'm very interested in humanising institutions. So I think one of the biggest um, dangers of the 20th century was the extent to which we can dehumanise people um, because of their position in the world, because of their power relations, or because of you know, their role in an institution. And so I think uh, you know, supporting individuals and groups um, in a better way, um, protecting people by giving them a voice, um, and I think making their lives more rewarding by letting them organise their own networks and their own communications and so on. I think that's the kind of stuff that motivates me. Um, and you know, for, for me, on a practical level, that's where I see most of the benefits of these, these technologies being. But fundamentally, I think what's interesting to me about all of this is the relationships of, the kind of power relationships between people. So the reason I, I got into all this, you know, back in the, in the mid-1990s was because I was working in politics and media and the, the stranglehold that major news organisations had over the representation of people's lives and you know, what was happening in their lives was so great that I found that very frustrating and I, I started trying to build my own kind of you know, horizontal networks for disseminating information that were really peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, people telling each other exactly how it is rather than being represented by the BBC or represented by um, a news agency, etc. And I think what that does is it fundamentally alters the power dynamic between people and between people and institutions. You know, in the past, we've needed institutions uh, in order to organise collective life and society and politics and economics and companies and so on. These days, we don't need institutions in quite the same way. And we have mechanisms for joining together um, lots of individuals, you know, based on their own self-interests um, and, you know, using their own culture and on their own ground, if you like, that are now competitive with the power of institutions. So I think that's probably the major change, is that you know, institutions are now threatened in, in terms of their power relations by groups of individuals who can actually organise um, to change things. And I think that's you know, really interesting. I personally think that that's um, you know, a force for good, potentially, although it also has a dark side too. There's a big challenge right now around the area of consultation, um, because the government says that it wants to consult on things, but actually, it's not really able to honestly and genuinely consult because the policy making process is opaque to most people and it can't really be influenced. You know, since 1997, if you want to have an influence on government policy, then if you are a tabloid um, leader writer uh, or you work for the Daily Mail, actually you have much more influence on government policy than any group of individual citizens can possibly have because this particular government you know, is paranoid about the way it's portrayed in the media and that's really one of the, one of the drivers that brought it to power was media management. So I think for me that's very kind of 20th century and I think until we can move beyond that and have you know, more open uh, conversations between citizens and government, policy making won't change and I think we'll, we'll, we'll move no further forward in consultation.